Now, when they had escaped, they found out the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled the fire and made us all welcome. Because of the rain that was falling and because and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. And so when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer. Whom do he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. But they shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up and suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the entrance of your word as God the power to take us from one level of glory to the next. I pray that's the word comes. Let it not come with enticing words of men's wisdom. Let it come to save your people. Let it come to give them an inheritance. And let God's people say, Amen. I've titled this message, Shake of the beast shake off the beast touch to three people say shake off the beast say it like you mean it in your spirit say shake off the beast when man fell through the enemy's deceptive agenda man fell from grace and all the benefits we, he ought to have enjoyed. And all the benefits Adam ought to have enjoyed. He lost the benefits. This is what happens when we, 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 we fall out of grace. We, when we fall out of grace, we fall into disgrace. When we fall out of grace, we begin to experience the things we ought not to experience. But I want to tell you that we're the sons of God. We're born of God and born of God's spirit. And that means God's giving us this planet as caretakers. God's giving us this planet as the custodians of this planet. We are the gods of this planet because we came from a greater being. He is the king and so we're kings. And so God wants us to, 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 to move as, as citizens of the kingdom. When an ambassador of a great country comes, he comes with all the glory, he comes with all the power, he comes with all the benefit of that kingdom. We ain't pushovers. We're called to make a positive difference. We're called to, 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 to arrange and rearrange the agenda of nations. We're called to make decrees, and our decrees becomes law. We're called to declare what happens to all nations of the earth. I don't know what you see of yourself, but I know where I came from. I'm born of God, and I'm born of his spirit. I'm born of his power, and I'm born of his essence. And so whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. If you know your prophetic destiny, you will rise above sickness. If you know your prophetic destiny, you will rise above pain. If you know your prophetic destiny, you will rise above all manner of afflictions. If you know your prophetic destiny, you will take your place upon Upon the face of this planet, the Bible says the entire creation groans for the manifestations of the sons of God. I came all the way from the Philippines to Texas to wake up the, the mighty men of war. I came to sound the alarm in Zion, prepare for war because we are called to make a difference. Let every crooked path be made straight. Let every mountain be brought low and let every valley 
holy, be exalted because the glory of God will be revealed. Not tomorrow, not next week, but tonight. Touch to three people. Say, this is my time. I don't know what you think about yourself, but I'm stepping out. Stepping out of problems. Stepping out of poverty. Stepping out of pain. Stepping out of premature death. I'm stepping out. Why don't you touch two, three people? Say, I am stepping out. I'm stepping out of poverty. I'm stepping out. I'm stepping out of depression. I'm stepping out. I'm stepping out of pain. I'm stepping out. Joy has come. Freedom has come. Power has come. You believe that? Shout hallelujah. The devil thinks oh, we, we're going to begin with him. Oh, we don't begin with terrorists. He's a killer. And he has an agenda to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But you know what? You don't need to be afraid. Though God did not take all the powers of the devil, but he gave you much more, something much more bigger than the power he has. And God says, behold, I give you power over all, not some, over all the power of the devil. That means you can, you can, you can step upon snakes and scorpions and no one ain't going to hurt you because you're born of God. God puts around his ministers flames of fire. We're surrounded by flames of fire. And the Bible says the word of God is a consuming fire. I feel the fire of God in this place. The fire of God is going to burn everything that God has not put in your life. You believe that shout hallelujah. It's going to take away sickness from your life. It's going to take away pain from your life. It's going to take away disease from your life. Do you believe that shout hallelujah? Texas is your time to shine. Texas is your time to shine. You stay is your time to shine Sugarland is your time to shine why don't you put your name call your name and say it's my time it's my time you've been in darkness for too long it's your time you've cried for too long it's your time you fainted for too long it's your time you've been oppressed for too long it's your time I feel excited in my spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. The story of Paul reminds us of the Christian race. This was Paul who had a divine encounter with God on his way to the island. In, a, in his time of crisis, he was in that boat, and for 14 days, he suffered a terrible hurricane, like what you ju guys just suffered in Houston. But while he was in that boat, the 200 and, 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 and something passengers were all afraid. They couldn't eat. They were in fasting for 14 days. They were terrified. They were afraid. They were perplexed. But Paul stood as a prophetic voice. And he told them, he said, while you cried and shivered all night, the God whom I served sent an angel to tell me that nothing is going to happen to any one of you. And you all will get to safety. I come with a prophetic word that you will step into the next year in the name of Jesus. Nothing will happen to your family. Nothing will happen to your business. Nothing to happen to will happen to your career. Nothing will happen to your your health. You will get to safety. God has prepared a place for you. Prepared a place for you. Prepared a paradise for you. Prepared your territory for you. You will get to the promised land. Do you believe that? Shout hallelujah. And so he told them. And the hurricane destroyed their ship. And they held on. They held on. The word of God had come. But the disaster happened. 
And so they held on to the, to the things, the little pieces of the wood of the ship that was left. And they held on to safety. I don't know the mess you're in. I don't know the type of mess you found yourself. But I came to tell you, your dreams may have been shattered. Your marriage may have been shattered. Your career may have been shattered. Your health may have been shattered. But if you can hold on to that thing, the dream you once shared, if you can hold on to that dream you once shared with your spouse, if you can hold on to that dream you once shared when you were a child, when you were a child, if you can hold on to that dream, knowing that God who started this thing in your life will bring it to an end, you will get to the place that God has called you. The devil is not the author of your destiny. God is. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 12, 1, seeing that we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, not looking onto the hurricane, not looking onto the crisis, not looking onto the problems, not looking onto the crisis, Crisis, but looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. He started your faith, he's going to finish it. He started your marriage, he's going to finish it. He started your business, he's going to finish it. He started the house project, he's going to finish it. Touch to two people say, I am coming out. I know I'm stuck somewhere, but I'm coming out. I know I may be down, but I'm coming out. I will finish the race. I won't die before my time. If you believe that, shout hallelujah so they got to safety and just when Paul thought oh what a day he brought fire the natives called him and they welcomed him there's something I know about the devil you know, there's only one thing we can learn from the devil. He doesn't quit. He fights all the time. The Bible says there, there, there was a time that kings go to war. A season where kings go to war. And David rested. There are times for everything. A time to pray and a time to sleep. Well, you can spend all your time sleeping when the devil is not ready to sleep. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy planted tears. And so Paul thought the battle was over. And Paul thought it was time to rest. And so he went into this island, a place of refuge, and he began to enjoy the comfort of being saved from the storm, from the hurricane. He began to serve the testimony that I, I know we lost things, but I didn't lose my life. You may have lost things in this term, but thank God you didn't lose your life. You may have lost your best friends, but thank God you didn't lose your life. You may have lost valuable things, but thank God you didn't lose your life. Because God kept you alive, because his plans for your life is yet to begin. His plan is not yet finished. So you don't die with dreams, you die empty. Because God has put something on your inside and you will not die until you fulfill every bit of your destiny plan. You will fulfill your destiny precept upon precept, line upon line, chapter upon chapter. I prophesy that you will fulfill every bit of your destiny I cancel the handwriting of death the handwriting of sickness the handwriting of premature death I cancel it in the name of Jesus no weapon of the enemy fashion against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you is condemned I condemn death in the mighty name of Jesus I prophesy that they will run they may come against you in one way but they will disperse in seven different ways I prophesy that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every pit they've dug for your destiny they will fall into the pit. I prophesy by the finger of God. If you believe that shout hallelujah. And suddenly Paul took the fire and while it was Resting. 
a viper fasten itself around him. A viper, a snake fasten itself around Paul. There's something about the conflict that we've always had with the devil. Because the Bible says it is the seed of the woman that's going to bruise the head of the serpent. The devil is not scared of you. But he's scared of the potentials that you carry. He's scared of the seed that you carry. When he fights you, he doesn't fight you because of your color. He doesn't fight you because of your degree, the, the number of degrees you have. He doesn't fight you because of your position. He fights you because of the potential you carry. He fights you because of the seed of destiny he, you, you carry. If, it, if the devil is fighting you, that means there is something significant about your destiny that he's afraid of. If the devil is fighting you, that means you, you are in God's destiny plan and he's afraid of you. If the devil is fighting you, he knows that your power, the things you carry, can stop his kingdom. When the devil fights you, he fights those fears. He fights men of purpose. He fights women of purpose. He fights those who will bring the will of God to this planet. He fights those who can bring God's kingdom to this planet. He fights those that can speak the will of God. He fights those that can raise the, raise the counsel of God. He fights those that can transform nations. He fights those that can declare things and it shall come to pass. If the devil is fighting you, then congratulate yourself. There is something about your destiny. There is something about your life. There is something something about your ministry there is something about your marriage there is something about your business there is something about you that scares him but you know what god says i should tell you that no weapon of the enemy fashioned against you shall prosper paul was the one that experienced the greatest crisis among all the apostles why Paul? Because Paul had the greatest mysteries. The deeper the revelation, the deeper the resistance. The deeper your walk with God is, the deeper the, the, the resistance that will come. Paul was a man completely sold out. Paul was no pushover. When Paul followed Jesus, it was Jesus all the way. The Bible says he who takes the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. I know that God is going to raise soldiers and generals in the 21st century. Men and women of conviction. Men and women of power. Men and women of influence. I am tired of the state of the church but I know that God's going to raise mighty men. Raise a apostles, raise prophets, raise teachers, raise evangelists, raise pastors. I prophesy, sound the alarm in Zion. Raise up mighty men because God is going to raise mighty men. I believe that every one of you will play a role in God's end time agenda. There is grace for the race. Receive that grace. 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 There is impartation in the spirit realm, God is raising men and women of fire. God is raising men and women who are on fire, who can spread, spread the word of God. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. We can't afford to be cold. We can't afford to be different. We can't afford to, to do ordinary things. Because there is nothing ordinary about us. We are sons, we are the sons of God. We are the gods of this planet. We are kings. We have domain. We have, we're called to make a positive difference. We're called to make a, a positive difference. We're, we're called to transform nations, to reform nations. We're called to save the world. We're called to represent the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom that I represent, there's no sickness in that kingdom. And there's no go, there's not going to be any sickness in the place that I leave. The kingdom that I represent does not have poverty. And that means if we say, 
thy kingdom come is not a joke. If we say thy kingdom come is a battle cry, a battle cry against corrupt establishments, a battle cry against the, pop, the powers of darkness, a battle cry against spiritual altars, a battle cry against spiritual wickedness in the high places. When you say thy kingdom come is not a joke, you're making war against evil powers, evil forces. When you say thy kingdom come, it means you're bringing God's presence, bringing God's holiness, bringing God's prosperity, bringing God's abundance, bringing it to the atrium. When you say thy kingdom come, you're linking heaven on earth as it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. If there is no hurricane in heaven, you can't have hurricane. If there is no premature death in heaven, you can have the same thing. I prophesy that the kingdom of God has come upon you, has come upon your family, has come upon the south, come upon the city, come upon the state. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. And so the snake fastened itself around Paul. What is it about us? That attracts the wrath of the snake. What is it about man? The psalmist said, Who is man that you're mindful of? The son of man that you love him so much, you've made him a little bit lower than the angels. You know, the original word for the angels is not a ministering spirit, it means Elohim. Elohim means God. It says you've made us a little bit lower than yourself. God made us a little bit lower than himself. He never called any of the angels sons. He didn't say the angels were going to reign with him in heavenly places. No angel was called an heir. We are heirs of the kingdom. We are the kings of this planet. We are the gods of this planet. We are the custodians of this planet. In other words, we tell God, God, you know things are bad in this nation. God says, I, I ain't going to do it for you. The Bible says, whatever you declare on earth shall be declared in heaven. Declare it and God is going to perform what you've declared. As I checked the Bible, I realized that the only reason the devil is interested in our lives is because in the Garden of Eden, when man fell and got put in place a redemption plan, he cursed the serpent. He said, you shall eat dust all day your days. Uh, we know that serpents don't eat dust. At best, they use their tongue as a sensor to sensor things. And sometimes they pick elements of dust, but that's not the, their food. So what's the meaning of you shall eat the dust all your days? I realize that men, we a man came from dust. And so, when a man becomes a carnal person, he becomes the natural food of the devil. And so, some of you have wrapped yourself with death. The Bible says to be carnally minded means death. But to be spiritual means life and peace. So that means when you begin to do immoral things, you become a natural food for the devil. That's why he wants you to, to, to sin. Have you noticed that when you do all manner of perversion, all manner of sexual perversion, you become sick. You become sick in so many ways. So when you become carnal, he feasts on your destiny. I've seen many people, that they go to the doctors, they keep getting thin and thin and thin. And they run all the tests. 
And the doctor said, we, we, we can't find anything. It's spiritual. And so the devil puts his, his, his seal around you. And he begins to feast on your destiny. Everything you do, nothing works out. You try this, it doesn't work out. He eats up your finance, he eats up your marriage, he eats up your life. He destroys everything about you. Uh, you know, Paul said something. He said, I told God three times. Take away this stone from my flesh. And all through his ministry, in as much as he, he carried out great miracles and did great exploits, he was always met with misfortunes. And towards the last, towards the end of his ministry, towards the end of his ministry, Paul, this great evil, the spiritual evil, eventually manifested as a viper. And when Paul took off that viper, that was the beginning of the freedom that Paul experienced. Nowhere did we say he encountered those problems again because that was the last journey he made before he stood before the king and by choice, Paul said, okay, I want to be killed for this gospel. If Paul didn't make up his mind to die for the gospel, he would have been alive. There are people in this place, all your life, it's been a struggle. The viper is not going to manifest if you're a cold person, if you don't know how to pray. It's going to hide. He hides, he hides in, compl in complacent places. He hides in prayerlessness. He hides in sin. He hides in sexual immorality. He hides in malice. He hides in the works of the flesh. He hides in greed. He hides in, in unforgiveness. He hides. But when you get fervent in the Lord, when you get into prayer, the heat, anytime the enemy sees the heat, the heat is going to manifest. He begins to manifest because the serpent, the, the viper can't stand the heat of God. That's why tonight the fire of God is going to come and every viper, generational viper, generational altars, generational spirits will be torn today, not tomorrow. Anything that's held you will be broken. Every snare will be broken. Every Every conspiracy will be destroyed. Every handwriting against you will be annulled. Every curse shall be broken. Every incantation, every enchantment against you will not stand. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Touch two, three people say, this is my time. I want to be free. I will shake up the beast. Shake out the beast. I will shake it off of my system. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. The reason your life has been in circle is because you've not done any battle at all. The devil can't stand fire. He can't stand it. That's why when Jesus, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 4.20, the kingdom of God is not in words. In the book of Acts 1, it says, and you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. One sign of knowing the Holy Spirit. It's the fire that he brings. The Bible says. John told them. He said you, you, you don't understand. It's not just baptism. He said I, I baptize you. I baptize you with water. But someone is going to baptize you with fire. You, you, you can't be on fire. You know, when, when, when the fire came, the viper, uh, I can't stand this. And Paul shook, shook, shook the beast into the fire. Satan belongs to fire. He's going to be consumed in the end time by fire. He has no business residing in your body. 
He has no business residing in your home. He has no business building altars in your life. He has no business residing in your marriage. He has no business residing in your church. By the finger of God, I suck every evil altar in your home, in your marriage, in your life, in your family. Say, I receive. And after Paul shook the beast into the fire. You know, when you carry the garment of reproach, people begin to say things about you. Some of you, you go for interviews and nothing happens. You submit the interview, nothing happens. They say, no, we can't take you for no reason. It's because you're putting on garments that are strange. The Bible says in the book of Psalm, it says, let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. Why was the enemy, why did the enemy accuse Joshua, the high priest? Because he put on filthy garments. He put on filthy garments. That, that, any resistance you're getting is because, because what happens to us in the physical is determined by the garments we put on in the spirit realm. When, 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 when Paul cast out demons, Jesus cast out demons, the, the demons understood, they knew them. They knew the garment that Paul wore. They knew the garment that Jesus wore. When the sons of Sceva attempted to cast out demons, they said, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. But who are you? Uh, medical doctors tried to explain it. They said, it's, it's, um, it's, um, Maniac depression, how do you call it? I don't even know the medical names. They, 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 they call it all manner of names. They say phobia, because the phobia, this phobia, and the rest of the phobia. They say uh, bipolar, dipolar. You, you call all the names, all the ugly names you want to call. But I call it a demonic affliction. So the garment you put on, we manifest, the garment you put on in the, the spirit realm is going to manifest in the natural. In the book of Proverbs, they say, they say, and there is a garment of the prostitute, the garment of a harlot. Some of you put on such garment and, and, and you're wondering, you're wondering why guys can't even marry you? You're wondering? Some of you put on the garment of infirmity. Every week, you know the date that you're going to be sick. Some of you put on, let, let me tell you something. If God wants to promote people, he, he starts with a change of garments. When Joseph was put in the pit from prison, they said, you want to be a prime minister. You can become a prime, prime minister putting on the garment of a prisoner. So they put on new robes on him. For Esther to become king, they had, to, they had to put upon her the, the, the apparel of a queen. And when Joshua the high priest was held, they, they said, take away the filthy garment. Some of you are depressed and you say, I don't know why I'm depressed. You, you want to know why you're depressed? The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 61, for the spirit of the sovereign Lord God is upon me. It goes further to say, and he will give them beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Some of you are, are, are so depressed. I don't know. You're taking all the antidepressant. He ain't going to walk. It's, he ain't going to help you. I've seen people who were born depressed and they're still depressed and they die depressed. You just need a change of garment. Someone's garment's going to be changed. I said someone's garment is going to be changed. I say your story is about to change. Your destiny is about to change. Your life is about to change. It is not your color that gives you status in life. In the Philippines, I have some of my Caucasian brothers who are there doing ministry. 
and people looked up to them. But when I stepped in, the story changed. So they met me, they said, what's the, one even had the boldness to tell me, how come the whole of Asia opened up and you, and you I said, just say it and you're black. I said, foolish woman. You don't need to be, God is neither black nor white. I carry God and I know my worth. I know I'm God's ambassador and that's why all the doors are opened. You must look beyond the color thing. Any one of you can be anything you want to be. It's not in the color, but it's in the content of the character you carry. If you carry the character of Christ, you can become anything you want to be. I prophesy from this moment, the spirit of favor will be upon you. The spirit of power will be upon you. The spirit of power will be upon you. The spirit of, of supernatural favor will be upon you. Receive it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says God surrounds the righteous and he shields them with favor as a shield. He surrounds them with favor as a shield. When the favor of God comes into your life, your life becomes flavor. The favor of God produces flavor. We don't struggle. We step into it from glory. The Bible says, from glory to glory. It says, and now, Psalm 23 says, and I'll, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord all the days, not someday, all the days of my life. All the days of my life. That's who you are. But the truth is, you can take people out of slavery. But if they don't take slavery out of their minds, they're going to be slaves forever. Moses took the people of Israel out of slavery. But they continued to think and talk and act as slaves. And so they died like slaves. You must change the way you think. The Bible says, let this mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ is the mind of victory. The mind of Christ is the mindset of victory. The mind of Christ is the mindset of possibilities. The mind of Christ is the mindset of healing. The mind of Christ is the mindset of deliverance. I speak to someone. Is there someone in this place tired of your status? Tired of your situation? Tired of your crisis? Tired of your sickness? I came with the word of God that it shall come to pass you will be free if you believe that shout hallelujah in conclusion I want us to do something prophetic this is one of the secrets of my ministry let's open our Bibles to is a psalm that all, I've always liked is a psalm that can help you. That can help you to become everything that God wants you to be. Let's open our Bibles to Psalm. To Psalm 100 and. 126. How many of you desire to? Because before I pray for you and anoint you, I want us to do something prophetic. It's unfortunate that all the things that God has given us, all the tools that God has given us to effect deliverance, some men of God have abused it. And so sometimes I am so reluctant to say those things because I don't want to be like them. But we cannot say because of the excesses of some people. We can't say because some people use the abundance message inappropriately, use it without, use it inappropriately. It doesn't mean that we, we have to throw it away. 
And we can't say because some people abuse the grace message will deny the grace of God. We can't say some people abuse because some people abuse the holiness message. We have to deny the holiness of God. This is something that's worked for me. And this is what I want us to do this Lord's Day. Psalm 126, verse 1 to 6. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth, then our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with saying, Then they said among the heathen, The Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again, rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Before we minister, I want us to do something prophetic. I want to join you because anytime there's an opportunity to sow into God's kingdom, I have seen the effect upon my life. Have you noticed that anytime the men of God want to end drought or want to end things, even when they come to the prophets and they tell the prophet, uh, please, I have nothing. The prophet would always ask, what do you have? Because God does not give you what you need without asking you to give what you have. Everything you need is tied to what you have. Adam needed a wife and God took something from him to give him a wife. Moses needed authority to rule. Moses said, I have nothing. God says, no, you have something. And that staff became the staff of the kingship. When Solomon, have you noticed that only two times, only, only twice in the Bible, that the two people called down the fire of God from the Bible. You know how they did it? Solomon was not known to be a very holy man. He had so many, well, I'm not going to judge him. He had so many women. But Solomon understood the mystery of giving. And Solomon, here comes Solomon who had many wives. Who had, you look here, here, here comes Solomon who had concubines. And some of the priests probably looked at him. Who is this guy? He is such a, such a womanizer. But Solomon understood because God knows that if you must love God, you cannot love God without loving God with your substance. And the Bible says, where your heart is, there your treasure is. So Solomon may have had those women, but his heart was still right with God. And in the history of the Bible, Solomon's offering is still unequaled. And Solomon brought all the offerings. And by the time he finished, the fire of God came. And the priest could no longer minister. Another person that brought the fire of God was Elijah. In a time of drought, Elijah wasted all the water that people needed. And he brought the fire of God. Do you want your offering to bring enough fire to take away the serpent, the viper from your midst? Do you have that faith? It's not just going to be a convenient offering. It's going to be an offering that comes with weeping. You're weeping because you know it's a big sacrifice. It's a big sacrifice. You say, God, I want to break this chain. Let me tell you something about what this thing can do. There is a family that kept facing the father ran for presidency and the father was assassinated. The father was running for presidency. He was assassinated. The mother ran for presidency. She, she won, later died. And so the son was a senator. And God told me, go minister to this person so that I can be the next president of the Republic of the Philippines. I won't tell you what he did. He was not safe then, but he did certain things 
and I anointed him and I declared that you will be the next president of the Republic of the Philippines. And this man, Benigno Aquino, became the president of the Republic of the Philippines. When a prophet tells you to do certain things, he's not telling you to do it for himself. It's not telling you, he's telling you to do it for God so that you can get the blessing. Is there someone in this place? I want to ask you something. I want to challenge you because I want to join you. Because when I come back someday, I want to see all of you run to me and say, you know what? The testimonies are endless. My captivity is broken. The chains are broken. The powers are broken. Is there someone ready in this place to change the destiny of your family, the destiny of your life, your destiny? Is there someone in this place? I don't know about you, but I want to empty my wallet for this commission. Whatever captivity that is left, I want it to end. So, I want you to take a seed. Something you've not done before. If God is leading you to give 3,000, 2,000, 1,000, just take that step of boldness. We want to sow into this ministry. I believe I've seen this apostle. I've seen the way she prays. I've seen a passion for God. So this church, Alpha and Omega International Ministry, is a good place, a fertile ground to sow. I sow my seed wisely, and I want to sow this seed right now. I want you to, those of you who want to become part of it, I'm going to give you some time. Tell God, don't do something you've never done before. If you want to stop uncommon things, you want to stop uncommon trouble, you have to give an uncommon seed. You want to stop an uncommon challenge, you have to bring an uncommon seed. Just help us with some music. I know it. I feel it. I have done it all my life and I have seen the result I believe in this ministry and I want to sow here and I want to challenge you to use your seed to break the captivity every stronghold as you write begin to tell God God remember the things I have promised remember me Remember the captivity. Set me free. I don't want to go in circles again. I want something new in my life to take place. some of you are crazy like me if you're crazy like me do you accept pesos here? okay for the dollars and pesos I'm going to empty this thing I want to challenge you I want to challenge you I want you to sow into this great commission because something is about to happen we want to call that I'm not saying it's money that brings down the fire of God but your will your desire where your heart is can bring down the fire of God. So if you have your offering, I want you to come forward and let's make some declarations. In the country I came from, when they make this type of call, people run. They run to the they run to the altar. I want to challenge you, just come forward. Do something you've never done before and we're going we're gonna to pray
Elijah did not look at the water that was left. He didn't look at the water that was left. He looked at what was ahead of him. of you desire to join covenant covenant partners i want you to join if you want to i want you to join take that step of faith okay i want you to say this lift lift your offering before god say father in the name of jesus I come to you in obedience. I come to you in power. I come to you in faith. And I declare that from this moment, let every captivity, everything that has held me, that has held me, every generational curse, Every generational covenant, every generational en enchantment against me be destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed by fire. Let every altar risen against me be destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. I want you to put it here. Now I'm going to ask with your permission. Would you like to bring your family members tomorrow? So that they can be set free? Because I'm going to be anointing you tomorrow. Or would you rather allow yourself to just receive the anointing today and say, okay, let me forget about my family members. Which one do you want? Want to bring your families tomorrow? Okay, how many of you want your family members? Because sometimes stepping in the gap is not as real as bringing your family. Okay, for those of you who can bring your family, bring your family tomorrow. And for those of you who don't have your family, just bring their pictures tomorrow. Because I'm going to be prophesying and anointing every one of you. I'm going to prophesy on the pictures and tell you what God says concerning every member of your family. Is that okay? Is that okay? So tomorrow, let's come early. It's going to be one Holy Ghost night. It's going to be less of talking and more of doing. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you that for some of you, if you want to mix it more with faith, you can come fasting. Can you come fasting? Yeah. Hallelujah. I like you guys. You're tough people. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for your sons and daughters. And I pray that tomorrow as we come, let your fire be released. Let families be set free. 
and let freedom come. Today I bless your people and I bless the church that in the name of the Father, Son and of the Holy Spirit, every chain in your life, every enchantment, every divination, every spell is broken in the name of Jesus. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Arise and shine for the glory of God is risen upon you. Give someone a high five and say I'm free. Yes, yes, yes. Say, I am free. Please, if you're, you didn't bring your seed, go and get the credit card and bring your seed because it's not, you're not pledging. You are, you are just bringing it so that as the soil is hot and is fertile right there, it begins to germinate. So please go get it and bring it here. Let God bless you because look at the man of God. This is no joke. And that is why I want to give. I want to sow because I want my change. Tell somebody, I just want my change. Say, you may look at me. Say, you may judge me. But I want to get to my next level. Tell somebody, I just want to get to my next level.